Royal Arena, for many years you have given us fantastic moments. You have been a crowd with amazing energy. How are you feeling today? You guys cheer for every kill, every moment in the game, everything that we love about this beautiful game. And right now, we have one hell of a grand final ahead of us. What are you guys thinking about FaZe? And I know there's some Vitality fans in here. The boos still come. Well, guys, for one last time, Royal Arena, Counter-Strike fans around the world, Join me as it's time to bring the For the fourth and final time, we bring you a grand final to the Royal Arena. Denmark, it's time to make your country proud. Get loud! Let's get wild. Inside the server, outside the server. Royal Arena, Rops holds. Looking to give you the show. Kerrigan says seven map pool. I'll believe it when I see it. Brokey and Rops, they're gonna hold off at the beginning of this one, there was a good amount of support for that mid hold. Player back by elevator, so still layers even if Vitality want to come at this, but they're going to have to do it man down. I saw so much talk out of Kerrigan right before that game started. We have no idea if the prep ran this deep, right? Coming right into Vertigo is a big question. Vitality would never make a pick like this without some crazy anti-strat, and they must expect that phase would have no idea it would come through. They have to. You know, if I only had a six map pool, I'd be telling everybody seven maps. But, but that's a veto of champions. You know, that's something that you can only do when you're one of these elite teams to throw a curveball like this. You know it's going to be well prepared. This could speak volumes about x -Taz coming back into the lineup for Vitality. No Zonic to work with, big shoes to fill. Meanwhile, Vitality have just fallen silent ever since that first clash towards mid. A little skin shown, twists, falls back, but no panic. And I don't expect to see panic throughout this match. The experience on either side. Twists just can't quite get that headshot. Apex, interestingly, double kill back for him. His fresh mags come out, but he can't get anything more with the two. Toppled by his counterpart in Kerrigan. It is phase winning pistol once more. Yeah, that's uh, one step closer for Kerrigan. It's always going to feel like that. Map lead, round lead, whatever. Woo! Kerrigan's story on the line here. Actually, this is just the perfect final from the perspective of Vitality or FaZe, for FaZe and CS2, but for Vitality's year as a team to win the only major this year. The team to come out of that as the best team of the year up until FaZe showed up as soon as a new game dropped. Yeah, right, because a FaZe that wasn't showing up towards the tail end of CSGO. Yeah, the way that, uh, I think Manny put it was, was great, you know, it was a team that wasn't, they weren't finished, but they were out of energy, right? They were uninspired for a while. Like, they always made games competitive. They always made for exciting finals. They didn't win as many tournaments as some of the teams that were dominating throughout 23, G2, Vitality. But they still always were a threat. Yep. But now they're inspired, energetic, straight up champions, undefeated, still. <laughs> so far in CS2, unreal. You'd expect to see something like that at the beginning of CSGO or the beginning of a new game because everything's so new. But with CS2 and the amount of people who are still good, there's clearly a direct transfer of skill from one game to the other, right? I mean, it's not like too much has changed. But the fact that they can be this dominant is so crazy. And I say that, but on a round with almost nothing, Vitality have already come up with two kills. Now, luckily for FaZe, there's not this immediate follow-through out of Vitality. They just pause for a second, get their hands on that M4, putting it in the hands of the young man, Flames. A few seconds still left. Another peek off of Kerrigan. Looking to dance with Zywoo, but you gotta be cautious with that pistol in hand. Even if it's a Glock, it's Zywoo we're talking about. And sure enough, right there, half the health gone. A single headshot, but nothing further. Spings will trade, what? and so will Flames. That M4 inches closer. What, there, no, there was no investment at all. Look at the amount of money they have left over, and they're in a two-on-one. FaZe were the embodiment of Force by wins versus complexity yesterday. FaZe took it from their opponent time and time again. 
And now, just like this, we see a crack in FaZe's armor, a shot to the back of Twist, and he looks to disengage. I mean, he feels pinned. Wow. He's done. Vitality will come in with bare bones and pick up a second round win. That's a massive show of strength. That is so ridiculous. I mean, wait. The investment right there? When was, when's the last time that happened to FaZe in the last few months? We didn't have a single SMG, no Galil's bot, no armor. No armor, right? A P250 maybe for Spinks? Holy. Now, FaZe coming into this are the favorites by the numbers. Anybody who put money on the game, of course, you're going to bet on the team that hasn't lost before, right? That makes perfect sense. But as we've seen Vitality power up in this tournament, in sort of the infancy of CS2, get comfortable as they were in CSGO, I don't think people would be surprised if they were one of the teams that could beat FaZe and end the streak. Looking back, it might seem like, oh, it was only a matter of time. We might be witnessing that right now. We'll have to see. Sphinx catching twists, turned the wrong way. This is the buy up. Faze working with more than what Vitality had. And, well, Kerrigan can't manage more than just the one. Still enough to soften up this bomb site. And tidbits of utility to be thrown forward too. Low health on half of them. And Brokey lucky to be alive now. As Apex pulls off the site, those smoke grenades are gonna just be all that Vitality really need, oh. or so it seems. Flames will catch it through the side of the smoke and look to just continue this fight. But he's got to be careful because his position continues to be given away. The peak on the side of it, not going to stop him, and he will clear both. So Vitality convert, but it's still a good test from FaZe. It was, yeah, it was a good test from FaZe. And yeah, again, we're going to learn about how ready and how comfortable they are here on Vertigo. This is something that they've created for themselves, right? Seven map pool. They also That also means that people can take them anywhere. Their band could change all the time. I wonder if we look back on this. You know what I'll say? Most of the time in a video like this, there's a little bit of egg on the face of the team that took a risk. The team that starts to pick into Vertigo when Vertigo first comes out, the team that picks Ancient first, usually they're the ones who get trashed. It's usually the team that's already the favorite, that have a history of winning, that end up winning again. So that's why it's so... That's why we talked about it so much. Coming into this first map. Couple hand cannons for FaZe. Vitality coming into this map with a very tempered pace, right? Feels like if you're going to take a swing at the current Kings, don't miss off the start. We saw that insane back and forth between FaZe and Complexity yesterday. Nine force by rounds back and forth. And well, right now, FaZe aren't getting that from Vitality. Vitality won't give them this early lead. No response just yet. And it's fair to expect Kerrigan to die with just the P250. Vitality hit the pause momentarily, throw up that wall of smokes, and Brokey just peels away from it, so nobody's sitting in a pocket to really deal an issue to Vitality. It's just all fine. Yeah, they win the space. There's no way to fight into that, so okay. Even with just a USP, it's worth falling back, and maybe they can get a kill later. Boost comes up, ring goes down. And there won't be any type of eco back. Sai will make sure he puts everybody down. Fundamental gameplay says on the A site, you get to the corner of the top of the ramp. You get control of that around the minute mark. You have your smokes ready. Okay. Yeah, you can jump and shoot in this game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apparently. That's why Zawu loves this game, he said. Get top ramp control, minute left. Wall smokes on the A site. And, and if it's at that point and you haven't lost any players, you have a massive advantage. So that's what the T's are going to try to constantly repeat. Now, FaZe, they're smarter than to try those really risky re-aggressions on the ramp where they slide out. They're going to do that once in a while, but most of the time, they are going to take the fight to the bottom of it. Because they understand that Vitality know what to do with the space. And here it is already. Three-pronged attack. Ooh, bit messy from Zaiwu. Doesn't quite finish his kill. Rain will pick up one. Oh, he got away. Damn. Manages to escape, surprisingly. Apex's nade is great for damage, so that's going to be a three wounded for FaZe. They know probably about two. Blind over the you, sandbags. You, you can see they're actually pretending to not be afraid of it. Apex peaks. Oh, oh, oh interesting. Double kill off the short play. One of the players who was already so low in rain, 
and that half health of Brokey that he'd softened up with his nade. And Apex has been having an actual hell of a tournament. Oh, Fourth oh yeah, yeah, he is. Keep going. Fourth rated player for them, right? It's just Mezzi still trying to find his form with this lineup. Biggest game of Mezzi's career, as properly said by the analysts. Yeah. And honestly, it's not an event that right now he'll be remembered for. Yeah. His grand finals when Mezzi comes alive shows the potential that earned him this spot. I mean, huge shoes to fill for both the coach and replacing Magisk. Especially in the hearts of this arena. Mm -hmm. but we get another creep and crawl out of Vitality, a slow play. Guys, are Vitality still a little Danish? Just a little, huh? You can claim them. We, came, we claim Ooh. Americans all the time, so... Just a little. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for Magis, would they even have a Major? Would they even have a Major? No Magis, no Major. Molly's come through the site. Now we're talking about a no-utility retake for FaZe. We're talking about a no-kill half so far for Twists. But they'll face Sight and they'll see nothing because Vitality are just, again, appropriately leaning back, giving tons of space over. No duels, no, no, no freebies for FaZe to try and flex this retake. Yes. No kits either, they're gonna call it quits. This Ooh. is a 4-1 early lead for Vitality and a map pick that is looking wonderful so far in the series. That's very impressive, that's very impressive. Uh, and uh, it's been a great tournament for IGLs overall. Whether it was Boomich on Cloud9, did some amazing things as both, he, he kind of came in as a Nafany, as somebody who was Nafany before Nafany even existed really, just to come back and show that he could still play this level. He was one of the guys who shot Zaiwu in the back, flanked him as he fell back out of position, was outplaying the best players on the other side of the server, and made Cloud9 look like they could make it to this grand final. Got close, in fact. Then you have Kerrigan, who has also been pretty damn good 1v4 yesterday versus Complexity. Apex, as you just pointed out, has been fragging, and JT, JT. is the number one out of all of them. An unreal uptick comparatively. So it has been a tournament of fragging IGLs. Maybe they really are more than dead weight. That's what I'm talking about. You know you love Counter-Strike. Two. Who doesn't? <laughs> In uh, Maui's interview with Magisk, that was, and uh, Kirby. So much interesting insight into IGLs and what they bring. And, oh wait, hold on. No, okay, nice. Rops, that's a quick one. All Execution, right. oh. making a double. He's going home with that. Unscathed. Not even a scrape on the knee. 100 HP for Rops, and he's out with two on a rifle. Yeah, he's trying to strike the fire starter. Get himself into a round, get phased closer to this early start from Vitality. Do it with a bunch of bodies alive as well. That's what they're banking on. We've seen oh. this before. Vitality responding with the B ramp hit after they lose a couple players. It's the strat from the pistol. Robs just tucked along wall will die to Zaiwu. Flames efficient trade frags and he is off to the races. An incredible start for the young man. Okay, one on two situation. Can plant the bomb. Let's see how much space they give him. They might have to respect this. Flames, eat your heart out. You've got a full minute left over. This could be the different difference between domination and destruction here for FaZe. If they could pick this back up and pull back this half. But he's got close to an even chance of being able to change those odds. At the very start of this event, Apex goes on record as saying, we will not replace Magisk, so the young players have to step up. Flamesy? Under the magnifying glass now at the 25 second mark, he is on the opposite side of the map. And well, FaZe have just found out. So he's gonna have to lean back, bank on this AK, try to hit those headshots. He could have played passive, and he still can. Options open with a flash to work with. CTs have the kit on Kerrigan, so his hands will be busy as this retake comes out. Will the trades be good? Will they be needed? He tucks in. And as he sits back, he hears that first tap. Kerrigan, like we said, hands busy all the way, all the way, all the way for oh. Kerrigan. Oh. He will clutch and kill. Wow, the stick out in the open. They cover the ramp. It was planted for both, so he thought, okay, they're probably going to tap it and try to push. That's a fair call to make. There's a part of him that wanted to go back there in the CT spawn. And he went for the standard play. It was still a 1v2. 
And they're almost lucky to get a bomb plant considering they started this round out 5v3. But I think there was a world where he wins that. Stick just in time there for Kerrigan. Pros do not fake. Buyback has an MP9 on Twist, and it's a faster pace. We haven't seen this Ooh. kind of tempo. Flangsy comes around, and with the pressure off the flashbang, Baze, it's a one-off round potentially queued up. Yeah, that's a round one, 1v1. One but a sketchy road ahead. If they, suddenly they get reset. They forgot about this. This one comes down to timing. Brokey strikes a single Ooh, frag. Nice denial out of Flamesy. I mean, his headshots are there. The trade frags are good. Did the same thing back to the B site, but Rain has that intuition to check for the mid flank and Spinks's lurk will get punished. Yeah, it comes in early. That could have been the round done, obviously, if he gets that kill, but now it becomes a lot more tricky here for Vitality. As they try to group back up, it's an initial peak from Apex that can't even be traded. But that little delay gives Flames a chance to come back. Yeah. Three kills on Flames again, and he needs another double to ace. He chases the elevator kill. That's oh. four. Flames trying to set FaZe on fire, and he's gone. Another chance to just eject out of this bomb site and try to clutch. Lost it in the last one, but he's gone. He is out of there. And as his bomb goes down, it is a very quick approach for Robs on 45 HP. Oh! But his head, and that is two failed clutches out of flame. Wow. The aim is there, the close is not. He was nearly the ember that erupted, and instead, he's extinguished. That was so close from Flamesy, but man, you got to feel for him. He's the guy who got four kills in that round, plus it turned into another clutch from him. Sphinx could have, again, won the round right away, but if he had waited in that situation in a four on three, yeah, he was on a pretty fast timing, but if the attack came in at least a little bit up the ramp, they don't check the flank, then they have a fair trade at the guys coming up the ramp to fight, plus Sphinx to come in later. That feels like more of a lock, but good on Rain for checking his flank. There was no one there in mid, they were worried about it, and they didn't get tunnel vision. And that's something that you can always count on phase for. So I think even if they get told instructions, they're still going to keep in their mind an inventory of options that can take place. And they're, they're five fingers on one hand. Sorry, taken. <laughs> that was number one on the things of list that he loves, right? Yep. Zaiwu, what can't you live with? He was asked. Yeah. Girlfriend, Counter Strike, and oh. Mango Bubble Tea. Not even water. What is this guy? Molly into smoke exchange towards the B site. As much as we can sit here and sing Flames' as praise, 15 Ooh. and 4, it's Rops, 10 and 5. Cooling off his opposition. Zaiwu, easy opening pick. A little peek out of rain that gets punished. You know, we saw Apex's spray get a little far away from it, kind of sloppy, let the players move around top ramp, but you put Zywu on the big green scoped up, and no movement comes for free. 5v4 is not enough, though. We've seen Vitality get to a good position early round here in these last couple. Phase no, they can escape. Start boosting their economy if they pick up a decent round win, and they have found options to get active on the map. Aggressive push here out of Robs, just trying to find his victim as Kerrigan has to lean back. Apex comes around the corner. Oh, and Kerrigan, he can't react to it. Apex tries to go one further, and he will get away with a second frag. Whoa. Fragging in-game leaders, folks. And they caught the flank, so Robs, well, sorry, Robs got the kill, but now they know where he is. Easy for them to turn attention back. Sphinx can just anchor this push, and it's just far too daunting for Robs to try to get this going. Damn. We saw a single player alive for back-to-back -back round wins out of phase, mm -hmm. and now they've lost the next one with two standing, if they're lucky. There's a chance Vitality can come clear out these players, and then we're talking phase with real issues. This is a moment where, like, just to compare it to another team, when I talk about Heroic and Cadian, where they would make an effort to hunt down the remaining players wipe and the absolutely wipe, wipe the, the money clean. That's not Vitality style. It's more think about our own money first, play very fundamentally sound counter strike and keep an advantage never give it away keep all their utility into the next round and try to win again from just a slightly more dominant position so those two guns could matter here for phase it's actually their only lifeline now after winning the last two rounds in a 1v1 so it looks like the 5v4 is finally add up 
I mean, the early and mid rounds is all vitality. Mm -hmm. In closing, of course, players are going to pull out some clutches, deny some clutches. They can expect that. I think that's where Apex just wants to say, turn up the velocity. Let's end this round before it gets to a nervous point, past the 40 second mark, one or two players alive with lethal nades. Let's explode on them. It's an element of Apex's game that luckily hasn't gone away. There was a time with Vitality struggles where I would watch Apex and it felt like he had something better to get to. Felt like he needed rounds to end fast and then giving away openings, particularly <laughs> on Vertigo, towards short side A ramp. Oh, spamming through the smoke, getting shot Just back, yeah. All the time, taking yeah. risks he didn't need no, to. No, he's so much more responsible now. Yes. And we're talking about that evolution in one year, you know? And that's Apex, who was a top 20 player in 2018 as an entry fragger, one of the best players in the world as an individual, had to drop off, learn how to IGL, come back, and is now both an elite IGL and a very reliable individual player. Particularly at this event. Putting his frags up as... There's the peak out of flames. He gets the better of the B site. We haven't seen early success at a B site. It's been ramp hit, ramp hit, sometimes mid lurk. And now with that instant kill, I mean, those two rifles that Twist and Rops are able to save, they're nowhere to be found. I, I need to know the conversation around picking Vertigo, right? Because we look at Mezzi's stats on this map, he doesn't even have a good time. Like, even thinking about his maps on Fnatic, it, just looking at his stats, I would say he would not say this is one of his, and he's zero and six right now, so. Yeah, just like Twist. Doesn't even like the map, maybe. So whose idea was it? How did they come to this? Obviously, that's something that couldn't be spoiled before the match began. Afterwards, would love to know. So the two guns will just get grandfathered into the next round and... Oh, he brought up Twist. Yeah, true. Yeah, sorry, I hate to do that to you. Yeah, I mean, you are also Canadian, by the mm -hmm. way. But That's true. Yeah. I always knew the French didn't see themselves as one of us. Man, I can't believe we are nine rounds into this game and Flames is sitting at 16 and 4. I mean, he's gotten entry frags. He's gotten yeah. an entire collection of trade frags already. Oh, yeah. He could have put two clutches to his name within these 16 frags. Yes. I mean, it, we're talking about just a total takeover of the server from this young gentleman. This is a grand final. That is, this is something that Fame's going to remember for the rest of his career, playing this okay. well in a grand final. And when we think about, of course, what Magisk and Dupree had, it was some of the most winningness careers in the world, right? Yeah. The history books were full of their names. Flames has only lifted one trophy in his career mm -hmm. back at Gamers 8 early this year. Yeah. Again, inexperience versus Magisk and Dupree. And on the big stage, the biggest criticism of Flames throughout the start of 2023 with his tenure back on OG was that this kid goes quiet. Instead, he's got the arena oh. silent. Sphinx and Flames combine. I love the third HE. The commitment there, because you can throw two and do 90 damage. If you throw two perfectly, you do 100. But three, you could be a little sloppy and still kill him. So another 5v4. And that's a call out. Brokey's been there a couple of times. Oh, that's noise being made. Kerrigan's probably going to die, I think, as I was only waiting out this timing, but yeah, he's... Oh, he's going to miss it, actually. He's going to leave the scope. Kerrigan scoops that up. Oh, wow, I thought for sure he was dead after that drop onto the ramp. This is big for FaZe to bring back this 5v4, and time is against Vitality now under 50 seconds. He's sitting on it. He saw the shadow coming, so he kind of oh, jumped the gun. Oh, he shot early. Now they're on high alert. So Kerrigan getting a little antsy as he sat there on his own. They heard one above running the rotation into the site. And 35 seconds, still looking composed, yeah. but the sands of time starting to fall through. It's a pack of players on ramp. And that ever-present lurk out of Sphinx, which catches Twists for his seventh death with no kills. And then Sphinx can even take his sweet time. He'll compromise the back line that is on A. Eventually, Rain's got to try to get out of there. And this is where Sphinx is best served, right? Getting to this point, but not going farther. Oh, and oh, Rob's tries to flank the flanker. Yeah, but a second before Rain gets caught. He's also got to walk. He's also got to walk, and there's no way to call that out. So Sphinx, domineering presence with the one kill. I don't think he cared about getting anything else. He knew that, that he was just gonna bleed the time out the clock and Vitality, that was, that was great. Shadow's working in their favor, both inside of mid and right there against FaZe on that flank lower. That goes both ways. Now you gotta be careful down there. In general, that's not a great place to hold from. 
Even if we go back to CSGO, when you take bottom ramp control as a CT, you don't want to leave people down there because that big box, people try to stand on top of it. There's no other angles you have to clear, so it's very easy to fight against you. But for Kerrigan, this is a new situation. He just killed Robson at, or Saiwu at an interesting timing. So he thought, all right, maybe if I die here, even if it's a little later, I could take a risk. But it'll be so late that if Ian and I get one kill, Rain will do the rest of the work. There won't be enough time for the exact. But Vitality are sort of just in time at every step of the way. And they approach pretty carefully. They didn't start running right after that frag. Miss flick out of no, oh, no it isn't. Miss. <laughs> oh my god. All right, bending bullets. Just trying to stop the flames' terror in this first half. So I was going to be looking for sweet revenge versus Kerrigan. Nearly drawing back that five versus four advantage out of the hands of Vitality last round, but I mean, FaZe, it's a pistol win and it's two 1v1s. Mm -hmm. That is what makes up this three round half so far from them. This is a, a very interesting spot for FaZe. Like, look at the map for them. It's just like a brand new complexion at the moment and a lot of it has to do with ROPS. Trying to peer over smoke, won't get a glance at anything. This consistency in Spinx's top mid lurk though, ROPS is on high alert for it. He may Wait. have just seen a sliver, oh. but as he tries to chase it, Spinks gets back into the corner. Oh, so this works badly against FaZe right there, actually starting to regroup towards the other side of the map. Those two mid players are going to be locking horns. And as Robs is preoccupied with bodies over on A, this B site is so primed for the taking. They're going slowly. They're... they're... Oh no, another punish out of Zaiwu, and now they know. That phase are so scared of this coming in, but look at them. They're actually still on the ramp. They really believe there has to be someone back here. Reigns at least got a spot to try and hold, but he too falls with nothing. And while Brokey gets flashed off the angle, it's just too many members of Vitality and too tightly knit. The pack and the push from Vitality is unstoppable. Zywu's gonna get tagged up and Rops will kill one at the very least. It's 12th round next. It's money on the line. I mean, this AK could end up being important but nothing's more important than getting some damn round wins, and Robs will oh! flicks up and kills it. Hold on, Look how far away Sphinx is now. Of course, Robs doesn't know. 1v4, we saw it from Rain, we saw it from Brokey, and we could damn well see it right here from Robs. One tap, and the peek out of Sphinx. He's got the cover from Green. Robs oh. can't end it this time. Oh. Not versus Vitality. Sphinx could have actually given that away. I mean, it, he was so far. From the B site, Rops on the flank did something nearly incredible right there with those two kills. All right, let's see it then. Oh, yes. under five seconds, you defuse the ball. Meanwhile, blood spills inside this B site. Dude, that was a weird round. Like, it seemed like there was a tacit understanding from Vitality that they knew they were up. Phase were flanking. They were coming to reclare a ramp. They were totally scared about B, but they never wanted to take it. So, there kept becoming these opportunities for them nice to get flash. back into this. Yeah, Rain oh. sets up Kerrigan wonderfully. So, Kerrigan and Zai were going back and forth, but we've seen the response that comes out of Vitality when they lose that A hit. It's the B attack again. Man, I love FaZe's comfort here to try to push down B at the same time as A, even though they got what they wanted. They're looking for the 5v3. This could be a big one for Robs. We haven't seen a player in this position. It gets scary for him, though. He could get spammed. Oh, he at least gets burned out. Dropped to 23, but he escapes. At least around the corner, he's got two teammates to keep him standing. Leaning on their shoulders. Wow. Flames takes off the heads. Goes back for second <laughs> servings and just disengages. That is a 20 kill half from Flames at least. Rain will slide forward and clear Apex off the corner into the 3v3 as FaZe continue to just try and get something. A hope, a chance, <laughs> and there's Mezzi. His first two kills of this map. Finally a little impact from the Brit. Brokey taxed the clutch yet again. And you can see the odds. So incredibly to Vitality's favor. They decided to take Inferno out of this series, but maybe Vertigo will be the bane of their existence. Brokey looking for an entry, looking for a jump. And as he gets into it, Sphinx will waste no time. This is a Vitality that's not playing games. They are making a sprint for the crown. We jump back to the server with Twists still sitting on zero frags throughout this map. Ooh.
This is an unexpected turn of events out of phase, but... It's maybe, also an unexpected map. Yes, yeah. exactly. Maybe so because we find ourselves on Vertigo, their confidence in all seven pools has been tested this evening to start this series. But if we look at the match streak that FaZe are on at the moment, yeah. they have lost a map in the majority of those matches. Ten of those matches within the streak always feature FaZe going to a third. Mm. Now, a beating of this level, a whooping 9-3 half to kick off Vertigo, this could be a whole other test of the mental. And, and you could say that this is a, a curveball, but FaZe are supposed to be a seven-map team. So they claim. Oh, that's a good player to get down low. Oh, through the wood. Whoa, a bunch he came of back to help wow. the kills. Two more for Flames. How does he manage to get himself into every fight? And then Mezzi yeah. given a chance to lock it down. That's a full house on the B site. Woo. Just a slaughter of FaZe on the approach. <sighs> Dude, this is going to be a career best map for Flamesy. No doubt. 22 and 6. Unreal. This Look at is this. stepping on the gas right now. That's unreal. He was down to three health before that happened. You know, Apex is going to pick him up after the map's over. Man, and we started this out round two after phase one, the pistol with Vitality winning with a buy. very similar to this. It's actually astounding to pull that off on T-side Vertigo. <laughs> what the hell? So having to concede this one, giving themselves a singular chance to keep Vitality off of 12 rounds with the buy that'll come in the next. Could be bolstered by a bomb plant. We saw Vitality pull it off with basically Glocks, but those nades find their home. Rain blown apart. Pressure goes down the ramp to confirm there's nothing else. Mezzi could be tested. And again, a bomb plant here is a slight win for FaZe. But he leans back, allows them to get ever closer. Gets his first few kills in the final round of the first half. More than doubles it in the following pistol, and Mezzi is just going to go ahead to rip two go players on. off the push. There's another one on the box, and he's dead. This is Vitality to 11, wow. and FaZe still in shambles. There's so many interesting storylines, first half of the year, second half of the year. Players, IGLs, who are both playing well, who have done a lot, and evolved uh, star players who are getting back into the comfort zone. Rob becoming the best player in CS2. And Spinks as well, who has just continued on in his form. He has been completely consistent throughout the year, ever since Rio took place. I am Rio, I should say. And uh, has never left Zaiwu's side since then. And he is, like, Robson and Spinks are the best examples of, of traditional lurkers, a classic in their roles. But Spinks is even more of a purist than Robs is in terms of how hard his lurks are every single round. And that style of play, people thought was going to disappear after early days get right era into happy into some players who are known for it doing it every round but they've actually brought it back in a modern day of cs when demos are being watched like demos are being parsed you know and it, by the dozens at the same time to figure out what kind of rotations you make he's still pulling that off today coaches analysts assistant analysts yeah so many eyes on every single one of your moves inside the server, and those moves could be coming to a quick end. Remember, the one gun round phase have to work with, and it's gonna need to be Kerrigan to at least get some pressure off A. But he can't manage that second frag. Apex pulls back with the M4, Woo! and he lays down lead, lays down the law. Vitality will not fumble inside sight. Apex will not be bested, will not be moved. And Brokey, the next to falter. God damn. 12 3 from Vitality. We could sit here and praise FaZe and their ability to come back map after map. Yeah. This is the biggest test that their streak has seen. Well, at least they won't have to stew in it. This map could be over soon. And they could talk about how they, oh, they didn't expect the veto. It's fine. We're going to move on to the next map. But uh, this is a feather in the cap of Vitality and for Apex as the captain to see himself playing well as well as seeing one of his young guns play this well in a grand final in front of the biggest crowd so far that he's played. He'll be a proud, proud man. Final chance for Neo to get in. The last time FaZe as an organization won a trophy here in the Royal Arena, Neo was inside the server. That's nuts. Trying to tap into that legacy here. I think Cold Zero was the IGL, but yeah. we later found out it was Nico. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Respect for supporting them when they're down. That's when they need it the most. The triple Galil play. 
And the energy they've kept all the, all the way through CS2 is we're only X number of rounds down. They've only got nine. It's the one of the biggest comebacks that they have to make. But I think one foot in front of the other is the strat. I really, you know, this is one of the teams we're not going to write off in this situation. We could just sing Vitality's praises because goddamn, what a start to the day. But I don't think they're going to be any less focused just because they're on 12th. Just the perfect moment for Flames to put forth an astronomical amount of kills. Nade early as well towards middle. Just a warning sign of the defense that is in position. Spinks, well, doesn't even get a chance to shoot because Zywoo just rocks him. And then Spinks will pull off Brokey. Mezzi over towards B. This wow. is a cataclysmic failure wow. on the behalf of FaZe. A map that we don't know them for but a map that they will want to forget as fast as possible. Vitality have shown up tonight, and Vitality will find themselves one map from hoisting a trophy in the Royal Arena. Don't go far, the Grand Finals starts next. And we thought this was a risk to pick Vertigo. I thought this was a curveball, a shenanigan. It turns out Vitality have proved mastery on this D side. So much in control with the rhythm, the mid round, the calls. If it weren't for a couple of clutches, this was beautiful from Vitality. That was a bit of a surprise. You know, the pick in itself coming into this matchup surprised us a little bit. First time we ever get to see them played with Messi on the lineup. But as you said, the tenacity coming out from Vitality, the control, the pacing, the calling from Apex as well. And then of course, some individual performances that we're gonna highlight throughout this segment. This map had everything Vitality <laughs> needed to be the perfect start inside Royal Arena. And sometimes in a match like this, you need a good start. You need something to kickstart that fire within yourself. And this is what happened in round two. We're it's been an absolute pleasure, Copenhagen, to call these matches here in the Royal Arena. But this is Blast's last time in this venue. I know what you have in store for us. I know that you can get rowdy. So Copenhagen, let me hear you roar! It's a great life to be a CS caster. It's a dream come true. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. With crowds like this, and a map like Nuke coming in with a team like FaZe to defend against Vitality. Sphinx close. Ooh, Brokey instant. Single bullet, dead. Up in the rafters, Apex and Flames combining on the site. These dual Berettas won't find anything further, and Rops is able to just flick one up to take man advantage phase. And they hear that. They heard that. Brokey's on high alert. Yeah, that was loud. But, but you I mean, know what's important? He got up. And what do you do about this? He has no, he has oh. no gun out, but Brokey doesn't take the chance. He's just throwing a wrench in the works. You see the panic out of Mezzi. But he's, he's handing the info over. And he ran that. He's yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. So this is confirmed for Mezzi. The same way that Mezzi gave info over to Brokey, Brokey gave it right back to Zywoo. Now, Zywoo's got options. That nade doesn't quite find its mark. Man advantage, four phase on a difficult T side versus a team that just cleaned them up. I don't think they know. Zywoo close. Brokey shoots, and then Zywoo is able to strike him down, looking for more. Oh. He's going to slay both on the bomb site, fight towards main. Rops will make the difference. We've got Mezzi to drop. A lot of pressure for a player who's been struggling to get any kills, let alone a very critical clutch. Oh! What? But a flick out of Mezzi! <laughs> <laughs> on the jump spot. There's no way versus Rops of all people. That's a lizard flick. That is an ancestral part of the UK brain that just <laughs> snaps to the head. <laughs> That's absolutely disgusting. Elizabeth would have been proud. <laughs> Zywu tries his damnedest with the two... No! Oh, what? Woo! On the way down. Yeah. Crash and burn. Versus Rops, you know he's going to jump spot that so perfectly every time. That was his one chance. Ten seconds to defuse. As he goes down a hero for that one. Zaiwu started out, though, with those two frags on that big flank. And he was so close to death with Brokey coming up right behind him on that ladder as well. And Mezzi. Coming in to replace Majisk inside of the ramp. Now, I actually think that this is one of the positions where I, I sort of wondered if Vitality could improve on the ramp. Majisk sometimes committed very heavily towards fights. And this map on CT side was incredible for Vitality overall. So there's still big shoes to fill, but 
That's to say that Mezzi maybe could add something, his own flavor if he's feeling comfortable enough. Quick scramble though. Kerrigan's made a ton of space, and then he even dodges the single oh. core peak. Look at the way he's gotten up into control. While Twist serves up the distraction from ramp, Zywoo's now got his hands full. Oh. But he'll flick over. He'll kill oh. them all. And a tap out of the USP that to make sure Face stayed down. Such a good slip through from Zywoo to get to the backside, knowing that control door was open. He could have risked fighting Kerrigan, but. Think about that, the inventory of control right there. He lets control get taken because he knows Mezzi is up inside control, ready to fight. He knows he's going to have fights versus ramp first. And he could have stuck in the door and played it very safe, but he committed properly. That's a great move. It's Mezzi and Zaiwu complimenting each other once again. The English and the French still have a chance, Connor. Yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to you know, bridge that gap. Yeah. It's an uphill battle, but mm. we're trying. Apex spotting a little contact outer. At least that... Mm. It's not horrendous. That, that's it's actually, still not ideal. Yeah, there's a nice tell for them with the one smoke first, knowing they're going to get close to it. Wait till it's prim and proper. Throw the second one and cross. So they could chip down a touch. But the map control is great, and Mezzi... I knew they would be trying to attack him because we saw a bad map from yes. him on ramp. A weak link. Yes. Apex activates from the back of Garage. He'll make sure Kerrigan's out of this one. So double man advantage for Vitality, but they do have Mezzi in the open, toying with him off the double door. Where's the split? Where's the help? It doesn't come. Reigns then cleaned out by Zaiwu, who's toppled by Twist on the backside. Twist has to have a better map than he did on yeah. Vertigo. That was atrocious. And he gets off the bomb site pretty quick. They both split, change positions, looking to take it down into an even fight, but that's not gonna happen. Oh, could have been two on two. It's Van Dalken up next. Twist versus everyone. He's just wiggled his way out of the bomb site. They've completely lost track of him for the time being. He knows there's one still up towards ramp, but where and when does he get a chance to strike? It's an easy kill to Apex, but he oh. can't strike. Spinks as the swing comes through, and Vitality's 3-0 oh. start is strong. And they immediately fan out to the defuse. They kill Twist at the same time. There was a chance it could have got stuck anyway, but that could have been a round one for Twist. And I think you're right. He needed it, but Vertigo was not a great showing. Already looking a lot better, though, on Nuke. And uh, Vertigo, we, again, we don't know. Until after, until after the match is over, how much that really caught FaZe off guard. But we can see, I think, by the numbers that it clearly did very much. But uh, if we're talking about reliable traders, it's definitely Spinks. He's got to be number one. Um, Zywu playing great so far in the final as well. Outshone a little bit um, by the fact that Flamesy, of course, I mean, he was shining the brightest. There was no way to a have a bigger nope. flame than that. And, ooh, okay. <laughs> Maybe he'd be jeebies with headshots like that. Okay. That's a really big find. Um, okay, otherwise, Apex trying to cross secret fast and yeah, yeah, that's a you know a big tell in in the setup. But neither Phase weren't ready to attack off that, and Vitality are not totally compromised to defend this. Except we see they are underplaying Upper right now. Ooh, Molly on Sphinx. That's going to force him up, but good cover out of Brokey. Making sure man advantage doesn't slip away with ease. Flamesy taken off of the rooftops. Chance for Zywu to at least claw back they're, Sing. They're still coming at them outside. This is the best chance to fight back, and he will find a way to. But he loses so much health. Meanwhile, Rops has been able to slither down to the B site, so a ton of real estate still for FaZe to work with. They've got the bigger picture. This probably is going to get respected, surely. I mean, these guys have been the dynamic duo, but... They're far away now, and Zaiwu's so low, so I guess just happy to fight his way out. Flamesy went so incredibly above and beyond on that first map that we didn't need to lean on Zaiwu. The desk mentioned Sphinx could pick up slack, and already out of the gate. This time, we're getting Zaiwu up there. Mm -hmm. Gunning for an MVP performance. Of course, Sphinx has been the player that's been hot on his heels. Sphinx is the reason Vitality have looked so good throughout this fall finals. Flamesy drops a bomb out of nowhere in that last map, and suddenly this is a real beast. The phase will answer early. Now they can't have what was done to them like yesterday. Nine rounds back and forth versus Complexity made this map look like a pain point for phase. They were never in it, didn't even look capable of stopping the North Americans, mm -hmm. let alone Vitality. But a lot of that hinged on economy, back and forth, and limitations outside of individual levels. 
Avoid that. They will improve their score from last night. A popular map from FaZe to try to run it down on Nuke over and over again. And Rain is the focus when it comes to outside. A lot on CT. And oh, that's Flames and Mezzi going down. That's right. They turn the steam up all the way. And we've got Kerrigan back here, actually. Wait, he's, uh, he's separated from his teammates right now, and guess what he has on his back? Um, maybe that all-important bomb. Mm. So this is going to be a little sketchy. Feels like Kerrigan's kind of on his own mission, but he can also just sit there and wait and allow for his teammates to be freed up. You don't need to plant if they're all dead, and at this point, they essentially are. Sphinx, he's caught. <laughs> Yeah, the measly six health for Apex, who's been found out and stranded towards ramp, cleared yeah. Kerrigan's issue. Not a problem. Yeah, that, that maybe gave him more chances to try to fight back into it because um, they were wondering, why are they fighting us upstairs? They pretty much won the round already. Just let us save. But now they wipe out all exits, too. Just another Kerrigan master plan, of course. But these are moments where Mezzi has to turn up, and you can't die holding the ramp like that. You can do damage and fall off. You can do no damage and fall off, but you can't die without your kill. That's the worst case situation. How much damage can Zywu truly do with just that one M4? It's cool to see Vitality come in with some kind of an investment, but they flub the initial boost, oh. and that delay in the boost, I mean, maybe that would have been a fair fight. But, Wolf just doing work from okay. the top of that silo. Yeah. Not the first round, he's found opening kills. Yeah. Apex included twice. And we look back on Antwerp at what I think is maybe one of the best nuke performances of all time from Rain. See ya. T side, CT side. It's a feast shot off. It is about Rain fighting outside, controlling at T side. And on the CT side, roaming alone. Still boggles my mind that since the inception of FaZe Clan in CSGO, we have had Rain sitting on this roster. Feels like yeah. things change in Counter-Strike so quickly, but if one thing remains the same, it's phase rain. rain. Yeah, phase rain. I was one of the people who absolutely doubted him. In 2020, things were looking bleak. And then the pull back all the way to Antwerp, and as soon as he got back to land, exactly. so was rain. Yeah, it felt like the online era could have been the end of a few of these players. Somebody like Olaf, who's been playing just as long, comes forward. Lack of motivation. Just doesn't feel the same in a fizzle out. Not Rain, though. Flush is saying he didn't know what tournament he was playing in sometimes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rain still has MVPs in his back pocket. We get guns back up. Vitality trying to respond to this streak of phase rounds early on. 50% of the way through this first half. This defense certainly needs more. Not just in round wins, but at this point, utility. We're down to a single smoke, two flashes oh. for the defense. And just this entire bomb site blanketed in fire. Yeah, that's working. Look, they, they said dance. <laughs> Flames is jumping around. Molly's everywhere. Down to 25 HP. Bargain basics. Keep all Low smoke util. Over. Oh, and the outside smokes at 110. That is tough to have the stomach. We can see that apex position. Ready to catch a lurk. Mezzi here to try to do some damage outside. But the cross is open for now. He can, oh, whoa, and they, they actually did try to catch this. They had three people ready, though, to fight this specific duel. Mezzi knows now, maybe, they could be coming my direction. And yep. that's the bomb, but. Rain managed to get down secret, but. Are, are, are they maybe gonna go upper? Options open at 40 seconds. It looks like they're, they're trying to get a kill first. Finally, they'll drop. They can't ignore the amount of map control that Rain has taken, even though spotted. Flames leads on low health, looking to be traded. Rain going to make sure they oh. down, no chance. He's going to take Apex on the Fomus to answer. Looks like cover for the bomb at the 20 second mark. Off the line, Brokey bullet sailing over top. But Rops, he has been waiting and waiting, and he will peek to mm. kill Mezzi on the approach. Cuts off one end of this potential retake split. Apex has to wait. And it's not even a real chance for Zywu to come through with this. So taking their time, slowly but surely. And I thought when Apex was deep on Garage, not shooting at main, that maybe Rain being heard underneath him could have fueled Vitality to a rock-solid B-hold. 
not the case. Yeah. It's rain in control. I wonder if there's some redundancy there. We had Apex behind the smokes in a liege waiting for someone to push through into big garage. But we also had Sphinx, who was the one who got the kill from somebody who lurked through the smoke. Could Apex have used that opportunity to go and try to double up with Mezzi? In that rotation, that's where they needed the most help, and we're seeing that phase arc trying to get to him. Whether or not it's in the beginning round or later. Now, Kerrigan calls in a, a very complicated round here, right? It starts with upper pressure on the mollies, into the outside smokes, into the ramp walk with lurks everywhere. So it's a very hard one to follow, but I think they did get what they, what they were searching for, and that was confusing the CTs. And weakening, weakening the ramp, ultimately, was the, was the goal. And money's just been very bad here for Vitality, so down 4-3 on two guns. He's been very successful in cracking heads off silo, but... Oh, there oh, it is are you again! Dude, what the hell? How Sick. accurate is the AK from that distance? It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Depends if Rain's holding it or not. That is so insane. Looking for another. Yeah, why not? He's on a tear with these bursts. Meanwhile, we get a crossover towards Red. We've got a lot of CTs here to stop it. Even if it's just the Deagle of Sphinx, it sets up Apex perfectly. A little flick shot missed out of Roki. Rain's gonna keep on gunning him down. And as another member comes out from that smoke, he fights and he gets shot right back. Watson and Rain for all five. Okay. Wow, maybe we get a classic performance, grand final performance out of Rain. Kerrigan wears the Batman mask, but when they need him, Rain's also a superhero. Face saying this absolutely will not end in two as they pick up five straight. Copying and pasting this position top silo. Look who's below. This time it's Kerrigan up top. Apex on the retreat with the pressure bottom silo. He's got to make sure that he doesn't expose himself to Kerrigan. This was a play that they used to do with Magisk. Now using Apex up front. It works. Spinks able to push through Hut. There's an answer set up by Vitality. It's not just Apex trying to fill Magisk's shoes, but layers, and those layers take to the top. They can't know. Oh, that boy. timing is insane. What can Sphinx get up to from here? Wait, what? But I mean, yeah, okay, he has the, I mean, where would you rather be, inside of the A site? We're sitting up on T roof doing absolutely nothing. Oh, there was just no one here watching for the hut exit. There's an op that's now useless, basically, into this round, and a chance actually for Face to crush even in the exits. Sphinx found an unbelievable timing, but maybe he was better off going upstairs. How could you predict that, however? Even then, he sees a player out on garage, can't dude, do anything about it. Dude, Rain's a, just gonna lean back. That's the crazy thing about FaZe, right? Like, they could have been going outside late, coming back into lobby late like that. There's no way for Sphinx to figure out what's coming up next. Yeah, so, I mean, They're just bringing you a new round every time. Single kill inside a hut from Sphinx to Vitality feels like an amazing setup. They think they have the wool pulled over the eyes of FaZe, but instead... FaZe just creep into the A-site, plant bomb, and close it. Keeping the pressure as high as possible on Vitality. Again, Vitality are not the first team to take a map off of FaZe in CS2. The yeah. majority of their best of threes go to that third decider. They like to get beat up a little bit before they win. Yeah, I mean... They, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kind of relates. It's just the nature of Vertigo that really, I think, put fear in the oh hearts of FaZe fans. But again, it's Vertigo of all maps. If, if, if there's any map in the world that FaZe are supposed to get blow out, blown out on... Mm. And who are, who are you to question the resilience of FaZe? Taking answers. He's moving. Adaptation out of Zywoo, but a response in the form of Brokey. Up close, Brokey's off, shines bright, twists Ooh. deep with the headshot. And that's gonna keep Twists positive. Something he certainly wasn't across the first. Oh, and it's like clockwork here. 
Smokes fade out, man. Advantage held on to by FaZe as they, they're on fire. They, they, they take this pressure outside. They pull Mezzi back out of the ramp. They look to maybe attack upper, but they keep options wide open. Ken drop secret. Impossible situation to synthesize for Vitality. And then they fall and they die. Their rotator now inside of the ramp. They know he's almost always alone. And Flames, as the second last player, looking to do anything, happy to take a 50-50 engagement, ends up getting destroyed. That is Vitality trying to answer the phase outer control. Winning on one front, losing on another. They don't get the sequence out of Zaiwu. I don't know if there's a flash as he's crossing red, but Brokey's way ahead of it. Gets a much deeper angle after he takes Rain up top. That's a consolation prize. FaZe can afford to try that one more time, see if it works, because they've already got the value they looked for. If Vitality let it happen again, shame on them. If they get the kill, well, we'll trade it back. We can go on to our next level. And uh, wow, FaZe, what a comeback after three rounds, seven straight. That has got to feel good. These days, you can never tell what's going to happen map to map. Oh, of course. I like to think MR12 makes things a little spicy. Yeah. Yeah, FaZe didn't put up that comeback, but it's always possible. But they're not a one-note team in that regard. They don't need to have a bad start and come back. They can also straight up dominate the game from the beginning as well. It's a team that's uh, seen it all. They've been in every situation. Yeah. But we're seeing Flamesy die now in pedestrian manners inside of... Mini, we're seeing Mezzi's rotations get pressure, but th there's never been a double up inside of the ramp. You better believe we flip switch over sides. We get FaZe playing the ramp. They're going to have Brokey ready to fight with Flamesy at the, or sorry, ready to fight with Rops and the ramp at the right times. They're getting away with way too much. I think that Apex, as the, as the second floater outside, sometimes primarily, has to be the one to reinforce all these different positions when he thinks he sees fit. It's going to be him and Zaiwu, right? Yeah, well, I mean, we see Zaiwu be the adaptation. Yeah. Pushed out to the red root box just last round. Good for him, one kill. Out to spawn again with guns. Trying to put up some kind of a defense. What does the T-Sai have in store? Sometimes the best way to deal with a problem is to run headfirst into it. You know, if this happened to FaZe over and over again, you better believe they would be double pushing the ramp. No doubt in my mind. Getting the trophy control yes. and then forgetting about yes. it. Yes. We haven't seen that once from Vitality. Just looking a little stunned at the moment, but listen, this will help. Apex as far back as possible. Oh no, it's an assist. It's Zaiwu up from heaven, in fact, that gets the kill. And they'll tether nicely. From heaven and hell, we get two engagements versus FaZe. Here comes the reinforcements kind of right on time. Now, will they keep it going, however? They're 5v3. They could get complacent and still win. He's getting a little rowdy outside, pushing through those smoke grenades, thinking they're going to catch the defense and off. This would be such a phase moment if they won this round. Well, we know they love a 1v4. Yeah. The destroyers of North America. 3v5 is what it would take to keep this streak going within Nuke. This T side still on fire. Two rounds left to unfold. And Apex, well, it's going to be the first one, but it's just so costly for twists in that duel. Down to 11 HP means now they need something else from Rops and Brokey. More pressure on those two's shoulders. Speaking of pressure, time now starts to add that little extra edge to FaZe. Your option's limited, but with this smoke, there's an uncertainty for Mezzi, and we said maybe he would get targeted as this map went on. Maybe his underperformances could be an issue for the defense. He will sit behind that smoke with no information. Uh -oh. Flamesy reveals himself with just the SMG. Brokey's now going to be too busy, and Vitality will lock this down. Yes, sir. Okay. Zywu comes through. Three kills and the assist. He is the difference maker to get at least one more for the defense. Yeah, the spearhead, and he comes in as a closer as well. All points in the round. He had that barrel down the next of phase, defending his teammates at each choke point in the mix every single step of the way. And uh, he's somebody I haven't worried about so far in this map. It's pretty much the new guy. It's been sort of the rotations. I wonder if Apex could do more to call. He's got a lot more young blood in here, but if Mezzi needs assistance too, it's on him to ask for it. And he asked for an op actually, so <laughs> that's a... Uh, 
Let's that, see it. That does take the edge off the rotation. You double up on the CT side of Nuke, and then you need to rotate less. Flame's gonna slide in. He's in the exact same position just last round to close it off the mm. nade. He gets nothing. Twists, heads up, wins the duel. Zaiwu trying to find his, but the fire keeps him back. He'll be out of this hold if there is one outside for Vitality. A one-off round, not looking likely as Zaiwu and Apex hold it yet again. We get a slip out from Squeaky with an empty oh. weapon. Sphinx still adds a kill to the tally, but Twist is in the middle of what's remaining of Vitality. And Mezzi with that AWP up in heaven is just gonna try to inch out. Twists missed the first one, but he at least has the whole picture clearly in his mind. He's got uh, the bomb to boot. Fall back covered. They don't know which way he's gonna go. And it's for that reason that he's been cut off on one end, but with the heaven on fire, Mezzi cannot press out. So Twist has created this chance for himself to pull off the clutch, oh. but Zywu's had enough. Sits him down, and Vitality CT side truly alive. A little bit of an uptick, a response in the face of a phase streak, and their own T side up next. And so it seems like FaZe do have fight in them after all. Vertigo potentially an anomaly in this series. Vitality's younger guns looking a little more nervous here on map two. Yeah. There's a historic win streak on the line with FaZe. There's a chance for Kerrigan to lift a trophy on home soil to add himself to the name of Danes that have done it in the Royal Arena. It's a lot of pressure for these players in the server. And with second half set up, FaZe's two-round lead on the CT side looks to be leading us to Mirage. Yeah, they could be very thin. Looks can be deceiving. Absolutely. And even though Kerrigan was one in, is one and eight after the end of that half, his value was in the calling. Those T-sided rounds were comprehensive, they were thorough, and they put the pressure on Vitality to make those kills as easy as possible. And now Apex will switch over to the T side as the captain of Vitality to try to apply it in the same way. And Flamesy, as the opener, came out of Vertigo looking hot. Needs to continue on with that. Kerrigan gushed. Oh! But Rops is even further back and ready to help out. That could prime Sphinx perfectly. He finishes the little health left on Kerrigan. Yeah, that's big. That's first rotation down. And there was a second player there who was shooting outside, of course. Twist has responsibility right now. And it feels like he knows he needs to maybe get a little more. Can't just sit within sight and hope to stop it. But will his ambition cost him? He comes around the corner and Sphinx is able to react. Oh. That's two T's confirmed in lobby. They have the bigger picture phase. But do they have the chance? As he comes oh. up, bent, Sphinx slaps Brokey down and Rops. It's a single shot to get it back. But the bomb is recoverable. Rops opens the door. Position now known. Sphinx, these two lurkers. Just tucks in. Sphinx goes quiet. 30 seconds. Two of the strongest clutchers this year could come down to a headshot. Not worried about the HP. But I mean, what do you do? How do you do it with the door closed? With a barrier in place between the two? This is a massive call out. They sit and they wait, and Spinks doesn't want to wait any longer. Spinks knows he has to make a move. He wants that extra bit of time just in case. And guess what? Rops makes the wrong move. Oh my god. And Sphinx will quietly put the bomb down. Rob thought after this amount of time, it must have been the case that he left. But he it wasn't still, true. Still just fly up this ladder and rip a headshot off of Sphinx. Hell, hit him in the chest. Oh. 24 HP. But he came out so fast. Does he think he missed the timing? Plus with a smoke on sight, more insecurity. Will the early door close make a difference? Rob's was the one that shut it in his face. He then tries to play it the other way around. Rob silently getting ever closer, but he's not working with that kit. It Ooh. would be 10 seconds, and Sphinx is not going to buy into this. Sphinx is going to double it back. Time is of the essence. And now Sphinx knows that he goes for the kill. And Rops, you may find your wow. frag, but it's Vitality with the pistol. That was a majestically played round out of Sphinx. That's absolutely beautiful. Playing it with the knowledge in mind that he doesn't have a kit in that 1v1, out mind gaming his counterpart on phase in ROPS. Sometimes Counter-Strike's all out war, and then other rounds like that, a beautiful game of chess. Yeah, that was chess, absolutely. And what could be a tournament winning pistol round. We'll find out, it's Vitality who are up a map. FaZe have to go against it. Look at this round from beginning to end out of Sphinx, and this tournament, man. What a massive performance from him from beginning to what looks like the end. I mean, he is Zaiwu's right-hand man, nipping his heels in the stats department. 
That's a great dink. I don't know. Where does that come from? What was that? He was just spamming in front of Mini through the smoke. Oh, it's the M4. The this one is, M4. It's Apex luck. Get a nade out on ramp. Oh, no, Kerrigan. Oh, that's a massive. I mean, he's, he's playing committed inside of the ramp. They don't see anything else right now. Trying to get Util out, looking to use that 5-7. So and doesn't even get a shot off. There's two options that happen, other than the CT's mass rotator ready to get downstairs. But normally, the way they do that is by staying on the ramp. That's the easiest way to get down and fan out into dark and cross over towards clock. So Vitality know they've won a very important kill and piece of map control in a round like this. This is actually like a re reassess, don't blunder type of situation, more so than what are they doing now? They weren't talking to me. Nope. <laughs> and this is going to be a quiet close, it seems, as they finally are correct. The window is blown open, but no one control side all the smokes that they need. And the plant can safely go down. FaZe just hoping that it ended up being a gamble back upstairs, but I think that it's hard to it's hard to trick Vitality in that situation. Taking ramp with that frag at that tempo. I think everything made perfect sense to them. Nothing you can do about stopping this one. And FaZe. Well, that lead vanishes now as Vitality tie up. But there's still, they do this on T side. I mean, that would be something special. Now we're talking about rain on CT side, his autonomy inside of yard as a CT player, his kills will matter a lot. We saw what he did on T side already, that half of the job done. Twist having a better map than he did before. Kerrigan's calls have been super sound. I think in terms of IGLing so far this map, Kerrigan's the one I'm looking at. Apex I think has more to prove. And Flames has a chance to show on T-side now. After coming off a, a weak CT side. If he can end on a high note. It's one thing to do the first map of the Grand Finals. But he's looking for a series victory. A tournament victory. I mean, I would expect nothing less from Twist as well. That's the beauty of the FaZe Clan, is that each of these individuals could start slow, still have impact in the series. That's what makes their undying nature Believable every time. And Rain will continue to just tap back from Garage. He did good damage last round, didn't catch his kill. I don't know how no one died right there, but... Well, that's the one really good gun. Changing hands now to a high HP player. Chuck it over to Twist, see what he can do instead. The shades of Vertigo and Vitality's approach, just grouping up in these silent mid-rounds. And it's when they pounce as a pack that it does look really good what tore through FaZe's defense in the first map. This defense meant to be better. Not really equipped for it. But again, Vitality just wait. They let FaZe stew in this pressure. With incendiaries over the top, things get a little wild. CT's position revealed as fire finds feet. No sh damage off the shotgun, but the 5-7 will find it. Kerrigan serving up a distraction for Twist to come oh! through, and it's a brokey jumping shoddy. This defense with bare bones weapons looks to hold. Mezzi given a chance to stamp his name on a round. Oh! That Nova changes hands twice. That Nova takes heads off shoulders. <laughs> Yo, that's a nightmare Nova rotation right there. Vitality just getting up close, right? It's it's the beast that is hitting an A site versus these kinds of half buys. Yeah. Shotguns on hut, pistols behind boxes, and an M4 perfectly placed to support up from heaven. And two pairs of eyes layered on top of each other, just as you pointed out. It's looking down at Squeaky, waiting for that bust. Yeah, just it's the distractions up front, and it's twist to close kills above. Right back in the lead, our phase. Vitality still very well equipped. Ooh, and again, Rain is just pumping out damage outside, but he's going to have to be careful. No one died last time. This time he takes no damage back, 10 HP for Apex. There's a lot of players out here for oh, both of these teams. That's oh. a ton of damage, though. Now, Sphinx is down to 13. Mezzi gets hit through him. Flames is trying to find something off Mini, but no chance. He at least keeps CTs back far enough oh, that that's not only does he pick up this headshot, he's got teammates in position to jump. Yeah, that's, that's Ropstad, actually, of course. That's a player who goes on to ramp, so now they know the rotation is down to one downstairs. Oh, one man, goes Kerrigan. down the... 
Oh, he's got to deliver this. This angle can be good, but it can make you pay as well. Oh, first one's clean. It's his fourth of the map. And is it enough to have them stutter? They stall out. They hold for a second. And again, Vitality, happy to play with the clock. But they're going to have to play off those with health. Zywu, Flamesy. Apex and Sphinx barely standing. Oh, Kerrigan, he tries to push in. And it's that opening right there that could prime Vitality to tie this game again. Yeah, and Rain takes his first kill um, on top of Flamesy, finally, at mini. They clear out B-Site, no resistance, nothing here to stop them. Vitality, Broke, go ahead and plant. Broke, he's literally saving. He's already back in They've the corner the of a spawn, yeah. Vitality find their opening. It's, again, a lot of posturing, a lot of bodies, but more so Vitality just getting into secret. And Kerrigan, he's not even given a chance at a multi-spray. If yeah. two players come around that corner, maybe he gets them. But, I mean, Vitality, perfectly stopped. Yeah, that looks so nervous right there. I mean, I, I like that, like, Kerrigan goes for the re-aggression when he feels like it's time. Rain stays outside to try to finish off his food and Flamesy up top on Mini. And they stick around to try to maintain control of outside. I think we saw more fear out of Vitality in that sense. But the fact that Vitality can withstand that pressure and fight back and come away with a win, and someone like Flamesy can stay alive for that long and come up with two kills, I think that's a really good sign for them. But uh, all that really tells me is this game's going to be extremely close. Not so much that Vitality are suddenly going to take this away. Faze still have more to show. Lots of money left over. Brokey still on that op. It's this one. It's this one that's... This one, when you take Rops out in this position, you go downstairs, right? You know that he's out of place and that it's probably Brokey opping the ramp. They can't be double pushing it and they already saw rain. So that's where Faze's hand is kind of forced. And Rops takes a very good peek. Flames is just better. So they use the information perfectly with Apex at the helm and they turn it into a victory, but they've still got to go through a whole new buy. And this time, got the double up. Slight adaptation in the hands of Rops. Flames did such a good job off main last round. Every single CT was just getting peppered by him. Pressure all over the place until that clinical headshot shines through. And what a contrast. Again, we're swinging with two ops oh in their face. Oh my god, that's but so risky to do mid-round. They must have had some kind of read right there. With nobody else as well. Yeah, they, he, he must have... I don't know exactly. He felt super confident, clearly, to make that happen. Maybe... Yeah, could have been something from a demo. Seeing them peel back, and now Kerrigan takes another peek. And that's a lot of information that Vitality are getting without a death. They're still trying to make moves, but Brokey exposes. Oh. Sphinx catching not just the kill through door, but then the player that's maybe supposed to cover. Kerrigan's gonna try to draw it back with a frag. He will. And it's a softened up Sphinx. But just like the round prior, pressure downstairs. Can Robs really stop it with the off? Not by missing first shot. He may not even get a chance at a second. But he'll pop the smoke to create ambiguity. Oh. Which side does he peek? He wants to take a risk, but he knows they're gonna take over control side. 20 HP. He's stuck. Oh, the flash is perfect to get him off the angle. No help. Final nail, Zaiwu. And uh, that's too expensive to try to forfeit. But he's given it up one way or the other, it seems like. Oh, Rob's on the sidearm. Sphinx takes him down, and that's a massive round for Vitality. Maniac and Pimp pre-game as well, just discussing the possibility of Flamesy going absent in map two. That's something that we've seen in the past, and sure enough, this is not Vertigo in terms of his performance. Yeah. Sphinx oh, puts man. up a huge round here because he catches the back of Brokey and Twist, anticipating a T-side peak, wasn't ready for someone to be stagnant in the corner. Yeah. It's Sphinx positioning, crisp aim, and a 3K on top of this to put Vitality back up. His consistency is almost unparalleled. Like, in his role right now, he's just... He's so reliable every single time. And it looks like a great shot from Zaiwu outside, but it's the risk that if Rain knew they were back there in that position, he would have never jumped up. So he must have had some kind of idea that they were going to fall back. He could call him out if that were the case. But he could have all he could have also done that walking up to the blue box, getting flashed in front of it or doing it in a more safe way. Like from up there, he would have had to jump down and push all the way around. And that would have taken forever, right? Even if he saw no one back there. But sometimes, if you don't have the info, you still have to play for it. Or play like you know what the move is going to be. Whoa, this one could be for 10 here for Vitality. Not a single rifle available to FaZe. It's going to take one of those heroics, right? One of those miraculous moments that we know FaZe for. Something that starts like this. With Rob's solo kill on ramp, it looked good. But then we get the immediate push from Kerrigan. He just ran through lobby as if it was going to be completely open. Yeah. 
No care in the world. And it costs him as Rops then falls right after because it's Vitality moving as a pack. The newer roster with Mezzi sprinkled in. Another rough game from him, but it doesn't matter because Vitality move as a unit. And that unit's about to just bombard this B site. But what they don't know is FaZe is here. Not one, but two. From the corner, Brokey dies. Then the peek out of the Deagle in the back site. He does snap up to finish Mezzi, and he tries his damnedest to get to the solo door, but Vitality are gonna have none of this. Vitality mm. will take their tent. Wow. They are not I, making I, mistakes. I thought they would, I thought they would get nervous and lose this game. After the first half, I it thought for like sure. It. This speaks to leadership of Apex. I want to hammer that home. I 100% believe there's no way he got his troops together, got them out of that first half mentally. Flamesy, Mezzi told him, we can do this on T-side. Zaiwu continues to deliver. Spinks continues to deliver. He just worries about the other two and himself. And they put up three great rounds now in a row. Of course, it was the half out of phase. Just trying to make that magic happen. But the sparks aren't quite there within this second half, and time is running out if you were phase. We saw, we, we saw how good Rain was on the T side, going up top, clipping wings outside. He is instrumental. Could have a moment queued up here. But again, where there's one, you get the entire hive. Swarm after swarm, Vitality taking over sites, but then also at moments just sitting here silent. And self-doubt creeps into the minds on a quiet night. Oh, they use that info again. That helps. But hey, material for a position. Brokey gets a kill. Rops hears this. And Rain's also trying to piece together some information. They know that there's players crawling outside. Oh. Mezzi on the close smoke picks up a huge kill. But and remember, this has at least been heard. It's a distraction though, isn't it? Apex is waiting and waiting. <gasps> he looks away, but turns back in time. Oh, another Will massive. Not let Kerrigan slip out of here. It's another massive win for him over Kerrigan inside the lobby. Kerrigan thinking he could get away with something fancy. Brokey will find the trade at least. Apex not able to escape the hive. Rops deep, finds his. And that's man advantage back for FaZe. Rops will even hold back Sphinx. Okay, the desperation's here, and so is Flames. Lost clutches on Vertigo back to back. It's the one thing that he could not do in the first map of this series was know. close a clutch. And guess what? Time will decide that he can't do it again. Wow, you gotta give it up to FaZe, man. The fact that they kept the pressure on no matter what. Uh -huh. That looked completely lost. Just leaning back, even losing Rain on Secret. Uh, yeah, when they no lost problem. Rain on Secret, you think, no way. And they could have gone downstairs, but they did not. They were not cohesive. Just after accrediting Apex for keeping the troops together in these last three rounds, here they got confused, fell into the trap. But again, it's because FaZe are so good at cultivating chaotic situations and staying on top of every single detail. And again, Kerrigan, thorough but not strict. His individuals are allowed to make decisions for themselves. He proved that's the best way to play CS. And that's why FaZe are so sustainable, so scary for such long periods of time. Yeah, but a, ra a round loss right now. I would snap FaZe in half. We see the limitations already come out. Forward spots. And again, Vitality creep. Robs was huge in hell last round, holding back, making sure Sphinx couldn't get out with that bomb, just delayed long enough for the clutch to not even have a possibility. He's hefted himself down, but oh. the moment he pops up, oh, Rob. Mezzi adds one to the tally, and you see the immediate pounce come out of Vitality. FaZe are frantic to put up some kind of a defense to not get reset. Rain will make sure he brings one down with him, but as the fire pops, Kerrigan comes out, twists, burns to the hands of Zaiwu. Oh, what a big risk. Man Three advantage. Up. And Zaiwu's gonna lay down smoke, makes it harder for the CTs. They just disrespect no. the utility. They try it again, and it doesn't work on either front. There's no tunnel vision. They drop the smokes down, but they still watch him. They had three pairs of eyes. That instant headshot over towards the ramp. Rops dying, B site crumbles, Twist and Rain can't get enough, and Vitality two away. Wow, the dink is just not enough right there. He needed to be able to slink away. The same standard was held to Mezzi. If you die in the ramp, that could be too much. Even if ramp is open, that'll, even if ramp is completely open and no one's playing there, 
that will actually burn time off the clock. They don't have info, they don't have that kill. But when you kill the ramp player, then your options are wide open. You see the name in the kill feed and you know the setup now. That's too much. That's Rops' nightmare. That's FaZe's nightmare. And that's Vitality getting one step closer to closing out this whole damn tournament. We've seen double off setups. We've seen entire groups of phase players outside. We've seen Rain try to do it on his own. We've seen the variation in phase that we've come to praise. We see them get wild on that Molotov towards double. If Twist could have just gotten out of the flames, I, I, I then can maybe... totally understand why they indulged in pushing one after another right there. There actually is a world where they 2K completely ruin the setup, and then a flank comes in from the vent or wherever and does the rest of it. Rain was the one who took the best risk inside of control room, but then Kerrigan twists. Two players betting on black and both coming up with nothing. They gambled for that one. They lost. That last round, an embodiment of trying to create the chaos so you can thrive in the carnage that comes after. But instead, it's a timidness out of Brokey as he goes for the save, and FaZe are going broke. Oh, every marble on this right now. Brokey has the op in hand, nobody else. Earlier this okay, event... Okay, Rops at least has an AUG. When, when Twist nearly lost the game with FaZe, he said, man, I almost kind of thought our streak was over. But we continue to fight with fire in our bellies. And so they'll need to defend it again here in Grand Finals. Bro Brokey. But guess what? Brokey. Sphinx sees you coming. He, he pre-cleared this. Not gonna happen, bud. Brokey hits the deck, but trade's right there. Okay. There's layers on this defense, and honestly, MP9 exchange for AWP, let's see it. Twist has put forward great AWP frags in the past. Let's even transfer his skills from Anubis, because that's where he really showed off. Deep range out of ROPS, holds the line to just deter Vitality from getting ever closer to this ramp. Last round it came for free, this time seems close. They tried to dry swing it because they saw the AWP on upper. But now they see the second best gun of the round in ROPS is also a scope. A great weapon to have at ramp. Twist ever patient. Vitality limited. They haven't had any control outside, so it makes sense. Go ahead, try to swing your split. And I love that he catches him on the third piece of utility. Mm -hmm. Smoke, flash, no problem. Molotov is where Twist draws the line. But the off starts to get away from it. Oh! sticks it in the belly of it. Oh! makes sure that the fight goes. Back and forth, four rounds, none consecutive. This is where FaZe thrive. Yeah, that's right. One round game. Like magic, an op, an aug, and the next best gun being a Falmus after this 5v4, and twist. Recovery. Oh, the recovery, the quick scoop of the op as well on top of the trade with the MP9. The trades are there. With that opening kill, Brokey getting caught without yep. realizing that he'd let somebody get into the corner. Yep. No, no, that's that, all twist right there. That could have been it, for sure. That was such a sneaky move from Spinks. He sometimes does get there into the back right of Hut, but when Brokey went to check on it initially, already missed the timing. Then when he came back, he was definitely dead. An Apex is trying to conjure up a plan. Frantically. Yep. As timeouts start to run dry. As Pressure is on. Run out. Full buy for both teams. Vitality looking for tournament point. FaZe looking to tie. Initial Molly's outer. We're gonna get a deep position from Rain. Contrast that to when he climbs up on blue box, gives away opening kill. Who plays safer? Or who runs a risk that could very well pay off? Little clash on the squeaky door. No deaths yet, but you know you want to get out of there. Single bullet could have finished the job. Oh, Sphinx from instrumental to near non-existent. Mm. Kerrigan got so much damage on that, but couldn't finish him off. A couple of times coming into the lobby, getting outflanked, caught by Apex, actually, not even Sphinx. Vitality will shift to a new gear after getting shoved out of their own lobby. Oh, we were talking about a pretty broke Vitality here, actually. I didn't even realize that Sphinx is now on this Deagle. Oh no, this is real. This is FaZe with a very real chance of cracking the cache. That means there's only exactly enough utility needed for the game plan. Let's see if they can stick to it. Every piece important. Each and every step of the way, coupled with a nade. 
And there goes a very crucial flash to main. They're gonna test Kerrigan, and Flamesy picks it up. Right oh. the triple! It's deep from Grage. He lays down the law, and Apex... Oh. Passive position from Rain, not clambering over boxes, not looking for fights, but letting Vitality make their move. Oh, after that, they got the 5v4 and Rain, all in one breath, puts the spray down in the full house for Brokey here with the last kill. Man, that last shot's electric. And that was Apex's final plan. I'm sure he wasn't even counting on the fact that they now have to full eco to defend against Matt Point. Saiwoo, the hero AK of the round. Come on. He can't be this good. They told me he was done in CS2. Oh. And yet highest rated player of the event coming into his own 21 frags on the map. He's already picked his fight. It's only a matter of time. We're gonna watch this shape up in the next few seconds. We've seen a contrast in Rops' results from getting blinded by a 5-7 and losing the B-site to posting frags if he can hold down there. This time he's gonna play upper. Take a bit of a glance deep, but he didn't see the cross. And remember, there is a gun in there. There's only one Zaiwu. But believe it or not, sometimes one is all you need. No matter where they go, though, the approach met by Smoke, perfectly timed first on ramp and then a second down on Squeaky. Yeah. Vitality are just kind of being pushed back and forth. Yeah, but sometimes you don't want to block the exec, especially versus the stack site. Rops is alone here. And he wins the fight. Critically, that AK goes down. And you'd think without Zaiwu, without armor, it's got to be impossible. You can try to rush that bomb site, uh -oh. take a plant, but Brokey gets overwhelmed. That's the op. That's the bottom of heaven. That's Kerrigan now rotating in. Door swung open. They heard it. 20 seconds. They're trying to piece together the picture. To steal the 12th round like this? I mean, that's taking a page out of FaZe's book. Kerrigan leans back and Apex has found the safe plan. Now they need a retake. Oh. What messy. Quiet across this event. Hits a critical headshot. A two versus four, but there's not even a kit. No. And Rain's going down with nothing. Why did they block them? Connor, they blocked them from going back upstairs. They could have just walked out squeaky, and all of a sudden, phase inside that bomb site. Just, just they rip flesh from bone. They, Instead, Vitality on the brink of taking 12. Vitality will have one opportunity to steal away phase's win. They sent them back to Rops by himself when they had two people upstairs. Yeah, they get to show off that they called out their positions, but they didn't even have a stack ready for the site, the part of the map that was going to be open. Insanity. And he, that's without Zaiwu. And that's without Zaiwu. And that's without Brokey in support there. They weren't trying to funnel into the correct location. And they suffer the trade. We've already seen Rops die one for one. Glock or even down less. The yeah. Mezzi posted on the Kerrigan angle. Apex also slithering through slight sight around the rafters, but, pulling down behind Silo, just perfectly placing bomb. Everything falls into place wonderfully for Vitality. And after having his dreams crushed by his countrymen last year, Kerrigan, with a mere pistol, will face back-to-back -back heartbreaks in the Royal Arena. Oh, and that's almost looked tragic for Vitality. But now what have we got? They're in a king five. position. The spam is fantastic. The turn back around, excellent. Apex continuing in this event to add frags, but Brokey's back sight. And he will not play timid. He forces his way out, and they go down. That streak is over. And you have a new CS2 Grand Champion. Oh, they did it. They ended the series for FaZe. Through all the consistency with the new guys. Messi coming up with a trophy. This is not a vitality that leans on years of experience. This is not a vitality leaning on the core of Dupree, Magisk, and Zonic. These are not legends, these are newcomers. And those newcomers have just stopped phase in their tracks when they felt so incredibly invincible. The greatest achievement of UK CS in the last 10 years of Counter-Strike. Flames a second trophy, Spinks and him side by side, 
and an unquestionable performance from Zaiwu, who on map one didn't have to do it himself, but on this second map, proved the haters wrong. Doesn't matter what version of this game, Zaiwu's here to stay. He's not going anywhere. You can see the jubilation. Just pure ecstasy for this lineup. Apex proving it again, saying they couldn't replace Magisk while they have. And they've done so successfully in the face of the crowd without a Danish player here in the Royal Arena. Success for the new, a test to the new coach, Ekstaz, who has come back after a tumultuous couple of years, proving so much and stealing a Royal Arena away from Kerrigan. For the second time in a row, for the second time he falls at the final hurdle. And so the Golden Gate of the Royal Arena open yet again. In the Grand Finals, they've slain the final Dane. They drop FaZe on their heads, rising to the occasion to put a historic run to its end. A major return to form. A new force to be reckoned with. The Blast Fall Finals champions. Behold, Team Fighter! Team Vitality have done it. Against all odds and with a new team here. Extaz, let me start with you. You just come back, you add a new player in, and you lift a trophy. Did you always believe this was possible? Yeah, as I said before the tournament, I think we, we could win the trophy, or maybe finish last, and we, dec we decided to take the first option. So I'm really proud of the guy today. Messi. First ever trophy. What can you say? Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, it's uh, yeah, for the king. <laughs> no, um, pretty speechless. I think uh, two weeks in the team, and uh, this is how they do it at Vitality. So uh, it's a good welcome in at least. And looking at this fight, you come to your first event with the team. There's little practice. It's been some tough games for sure. But what did these guys tell you when you got to this stage? I think it's just the uh, the fight from everyone in the, in this uh, in this team that's kept us going in all these games, winning the first map in a lot of these best of threes, and just coming back to fight. It's uh, it's insane. The mentality that we have is uh, something that we're going to keep forever. Now, Dan, you said you wanted to prove the Danes that they made a mistake here, right? That's what we saw in the interview. Have you done it? Not yet. Not yet. We have we have a long long run to do. I'm just so proud of the boys. I mean, what we've done here, I didn't expect to win the tournament before coming here. But the grind we made all together, practice, individual, was insane. And yeah, I mean, uh, I love it and uh, I'm just speechless. And it's just good to win finally in Copenhagen after losing two years ago. And I want to ask you, Dan, you have to add a new player into a team, right? There's a lot that changes with it. And for you guys, even position changes as well. What did it take from you as the leader? How did you try and piece this all together? For me, what I tried to do is put William in the best condition. It's not easy for him to fit uh, Magic Swords. Um, so he wasn't playing too much of an anchor before and everything, so it's not easy. So I tried to help him as much as possible while the other made their job as usual, I would say. I'm a lot of credit for Char also this tournament. He stepped up massively. That's what I said on the National TV, that when you lose matches, he takes a lot of space in the team, but someone had to do it as well, and this tournament it was Char, so prop to him. And yeah, ju just really happy. Finally, uh, we win here in Copenhagen. Uh, and guys, who said Zao wasn't good on CS2 for fuck's sake? <laughs> Copenhagen and the Royal Arena. Give it up for your champions, Team Vitality!
vitality victorious and crowned the kings here in Copenhagen.